I am unsure, miss. Tonnet's central body turned somewhat, and look of deep thought came over them. Wait, we've established that these three are not party with these tins in a... They are wearing hab suits and have died more recently. At this time, we have two questions. One, where did these three come from? And two, what was that disturbance? They looked at Penelope. I'm not sure I'm following. I'm suggesting that these two questions may have the same answer. The sound and jostling correspond with an airlock alignment and clamping sequence. I believe we have been just boarded by whoever sent these three here. Sh an apt Terran expletive. Tonnet noticed the human's eyes tarry on the weapons crates, but was surprised when she instead stood and moved to the doorway. Can't do anything from here. Follow behind me and we'll see what we're dealing with. If something happens, just hide and stay down. Penelope let out a hollow chuckle. An expression of amusement? Why? Tonnet asked as they moved to the airlock. Well, you wanted first-hand data on human biology, right? It looks like you're going to get it, she said, moving to the door. I see. Not quite what I had in mind, miss. Penelope gave Tonnet a wry smile as she waited for them to take a position behind the lip of the door. Pressing the button, the doors slid open quickly, but no one waited for them in the airlock itself, and the doors to the Blue Nebula wouldn't unlock until the outer door was closed. As such, the two moved in and again took up positions. Penelope at the door and Tonette behind cover. This time, Penelope waited, moving the side of her head up against the door and pausing for a moment. She then repeated the odd action lower on the door. What are you doing, Miss Penelope? Tonette asked. Penelope tapped the fleshy protrusions on her head. Listening, there's something mechanical on the other side of the door. How can you... Questions for later. It's most likely a frame. There's nowhere near enough folks turning to piracy to fill a crew, so it's not uncommon to see them using mechanical assistance. Great. Really? Robots? A focus came over the human as she motioned for Tonnet to stay down. It almost scared them how her face changed expression. There was no smile anymore, and the eyes took on a deadly seriousness. They shuddered to think of themselves on the receiving end of this aura. Having noted her companion's hidden position, Penelope took a deep breath and opened the door. In an instant, it slid open, and her target was in front of her. A machine about half her height with three leg-like appendages supporting a round body, and atop that, a cylindrical-shaped head. A lens was looking down the hall to the cargo bay before it quickly refocused on the large creature surging forward from the airlock. A small laser weapon deployed from body, but it had no time to fire as Penelope's left hand gripped its head, lifted it into the air, and slammed it into the opposite wall. Penelope had apparently used enough force to crush the thing's head entirely as its body detached and fell to the floor. The shattered head only remained due to Penelope's grip. Oh, well then, that was... Huh. I honestly thought that it would be a bit more durable, she said, as she looked at the crushed cylinder in her hand and then let it drop to the ground. After a brief moment of shock, Tonnet produced their data pad and began taking notes. Penelope noted that the rest of the corridor was clear and began making her way to the bridge. Bridge first, hopefully, we can get a good idea of what we're up against and where everyone is. Tonnet made a gesture mimicking a nod and followed at a distance. Reaching the turn in the corridor, Penelope peeked around the corner and saw that the bridge doors were wide open. It wasn't a great angle, but she could see one frame of similar design past the open doors. Holding out a hand, she motioned for Tonnet to stay put. Tonnet was again surprised and made note of the near silence with which Penelope dropped low to the ground and made her way to the open bridge door. What was one frame from the angle of the corner revealed itself to be two frames and an alien in a familiar style hab suit. Penelope was used to perfectly controlling her movements in regular gravity, and with the ship operating on half that norm, it was almost nothing to move with speed and silence. She moved past the first frame she'd seen, which was evaluating the security console. 
Making sure not to alert that frame, she moved up behind the alien and the frame it stood next to. They were apparently attempting to slice the console attached to Captain Deeg's chair. This task was seemingly so engrossing that neither noticed Penelope taking a position directly behind them. In a flash of motion, she grabbed the alien by its hab suit with her left hand and the frame by its head with her right. In one fell motion, she crushed the frame and whipped its body across the bridge into the second frame, destroying them both. She turned the alien's face towards the pile of frame parts and then back to her. Call for help and I promise you that hab suit won't even slow me down. Understand? She said, with a deathly growl, staring into its eye. It began to shake in the suit and uttered a single wilting, Yes. Good. Now, you're going to answer some questions for me. Tonnet barely watched where they were walking as they moved onto the bridge, tapping away at the data pad and muttering to themselves. Inquire about limits of superb strength. Inquire about ability to move silently despite size. Inquire about ability to launch objects at speed and with accuracy. They continued as they moved into a corner and sat down. The alien in Penelope's grip noticed Tonnet, but did nothing but shake in fear and wait for the questions. First, how many of you are there? Her tone was cool and controlled. Five total now. Thing on other ship got Maul, Varden, and Aegea. More frames. Me here. Three others should be in cargo bay with your people. Frames too. One left on our ship. Please don't kill me. Cooperate, and I won't harm a hair on your... She noticed it was seemingly hairless. Look, talk and you'll be fine. Deal. It made a gesture that Penelope assumed was equivalent to a nod. Excellent. How many frames? And is everyone using energy weapons? Erm, seven frames and... It seemed to be confused about the second question. Energy weapons. Yes, I am the only one not armed. Last question. You have a means of communicating with your friends? The alien's eye tarried to a belt on its suit. Hooked on it was a small round device. This? Penelope grabbed the thing and held it up. Yes, touch screen, speak. It offered. No need. She responded as she crushed it in her grip and let the pieces fall to the ground. The alien made a kind of buzzing noise as it looked down at the crushed comlink. Now. Penelope continued as she moved to a corner of the bridge. You're going to sit in this corner and do absolutely nothing because you know that if you try anything, there is nowhere you can run that I cannot get to you, yes? It enthusiastically made its equivalent of a nod once again. Satisfied, Penelope set them down and turned to her security console. She readjusted its height to suit her and pulled up the corridor cameras and the cargo bay camera. What the little alien had said was true. The corridors were clear. There were three individuals with laser rifles and four more frames in the cargo bay. They'd gathered the crew back by the large bay door and were looking over the cargo. Tonnet, stay here and keep an eye on this one. She evaluated the situation. And come over here. I think I have an idea you'll like. Of course, ma'am. After explaining her little plan, Penelope left Tonnet with the alien who, true to their word, made absolutely no movements save a little shaking. She made her way down the other corridor from the one they'd come through and overrode the locking mechanism on its airlock, ensuring no one would be joining the party or leaving too early. Next, she went not to the door that led to the cargo bay, but the engine room and its many maintenance tunnels. Gareth had just met up with Deeg and had begun to explain the situation when the pirate ship sent a warning signal and began boarding them. Docked as they were, there wasn't much to be done to stop the vessel. They were quickly corralled together with the rest of the crew at the back of the cargo bay. Now I'm not sure if this is your first time, but we're not barbarians. We'll take what we want, and you'll be on your way. No harm done. Simple as that. The leader explained to them. He was a sort of bright yellow and red insectoid, though it was hard to tell under the hab suit. 
He was just a hair taller than Gareth and sported bug-like wings from his back that the suit accounted for. Gareth wanted nothing more than to yell, I told you so! But he would never admonish the captain in front of the crew. Besides, he had more pressing matters to think about, like how to handle the fact that Penelope was currently on board the derelict ship, seemingly with no idea they'd been boarded by pirates. He wasn't sure what to do and couldn't exactly discuss it with the captain, lest their captors hear them. The captain was no doubt in the same position as he looked to Gareth. Unfortunately, neither of them were telepathic. He could attempt to scare the pirates by telling them about Penelope, but then they might be able to disengage the airlock and trap her and Tonnet on the other ship. That would not do at all, and they'd probably think he was just bluffing until they sliced the ship's computers and saw proof of her identity. That said, he was fairly sure that none of these pirates were fond of violence. Most just used the threat of it to get valuables and leave. It was mostly a calm affair compared to what he knew of ancient human piracy. He decided the best thing to do was just talk but not mention Penelope. He was good at talking and a better sense of these pirates would serve well. So, what happened exactly? I'm curious. We found three wearing similar hab suits to yours on that ship. A question for a question. I answer that one, and then ask one of my own. Fair? The leader's wings buzzed. Gareth looked to Deeg, who just nodded. Fine. We found that ship not long before you. Knew it was just us in the system, so we checked it out. Sent the three over, and then... Nothing. Dead comms. Life signs gone. Weren't about to just give up on it, and it presented us with an opportunity. We wait for another to check it out, and either they go the same way as ours did in there, and we loot their ship, or they figure out whatever happened for us, and we take everything. Ah, so a trap. Just not one set by you. I suppose. But now my question. You are alive, so you managed to survive whatever was on the ship. What was it? What killed my people? Before he could respond, though, a familiar voice came over the ship's intercom. Tonnet. Hello, pirates. This is, um, well, I suppose my name doesn't really matter. Well, I'm here to give you a threat, message. Kind of a request, too, to be honest. All three, yes. Anyway, put down your weapons and surrender to the captain. That would be Captain Deeg, the Corval. Oh, gosh, I'm really no good at this. Um, just surrender, or else you'll regret it, because our security officer, Penelope, is going to do something that I'm, of course, not going to reveal to you, but it's bad, so you should really surrender. Ton it out. The intercom cut out abruptly. What? The pirate leader looked more confused than anything. They're a scientist, not an orator. But you really should consider surrender, because if Tonnet is on the bridge, then Penelope must already be on her way here. You see, what we found was an anti-personnel turret, a human weapons platform. We were able to deactivate it thanks to our new security officer, a human who, if I had to guess, is about to burst through one of those doors. The pirate leader wheeled around and aimed his rifle at one of the doors. Cover the doors! he yelled. The other two aliens and the four frames took aim at the two points of entry. The high-pitched whine of charging laser weapons sounded from all of them. Keep aim. We know where it's coming from, and no personal shield could hold up under all our fire. They held, but nothing happened. Gareth broke the silence. You know, Captain, there's another human phrase I think you'd like. I think even a human would call you batshit crazy sometimes. You know you really should look up some of those terms. Having Penelope hanging around. I suppose I should. Deeg responded with a quizzical look. Silence, you two, the pirate said without averting his gaze from the doors. You really ought to look them up, Captain. He repeated, emphasizing the two words. The captain suddenly understood what Gareth was trying to tell him, 
and, as covertly as possible, glanced up to the ceiling of the cargo bay. Immediately his eyes shot back down as he witnessed perhaps the most terrifying sight of his life. Even in the grays of his vision he could see, hanging from the crane attached to the tall ceiling of the cargo bay, their security officer. Penelope had apparently accessed one of the maintenance tunnels that Thwill most often used and followed it to a hatch that led out in the ceiling. She had then, silently, swung her way across the support structure to the crane system that was used to move especially heavy cargo. Now, she hung from it with one arm as she gazed down at the unsuspecting pirates, all of whom were still solely focused on the doors. So that's a no to the surrender, Deg asked. Silence! The bug yelled. The final part of Penelope's plan became apparent when everyone in the cargo bay was suddenly forced down into the floor. The bay's gravity had just been jacked up to its maximum. Ah! One of the pirates yelled as they were completely pinned to the ground. A similar sound came from many as they all struggled against the force. The leader and the other alien managed to stay vertical, but were clearly struggling to move. Even the frames struggled somewhat, clearly not built by a species that worked under such gravity. Deeg looked up with disbelief to see Penelope seemingly unaffected, still holding on to the crane with a single hand. She evaluated the situation for only a moment before simply letting go. Her massive form careened downward, taken quickly by gravity. Slam! The resounding sound came as she landed on the floor, her legs bent as they absorbed the impact. Rising to her full height, she moved with incredible speed. Her hands shot out and grasped the two frames she'd landed between. With a twist of her torso and extension of her arms, she threw them into opposite walls. Still working off the shock, Penelope managed to surge forward and crush another frame under her foot. Its shell shattered as she put her full weight atop it. Finally, the shock seemed to wear off, and the pirates began to react. They moved sluggishly, though, their rifles more than doubling in weight. The leader attempted to take flight, but his wings did little more than buzz incessantly, not even lifting him from the ground. Penelope, however, moved with ease. Gareth could almost see relief in her eyes as she enjoyed the time under Earth-like gravity. She dispatched the final frame without much of a show, simply reaching down and crushing its cylindrical head in her hand. The leader gave up trying to take flight, and the only other pirate not pinned to the ground managed to levy their rifle at Penelope, who made no attempt to avoid it or take cover. The hot beam shot out and struck her center mass. Elation and then terror came over them as they celebrated striking the human only to see the sustained beam was having little effect. Penelope held its gaze as she calmly waltzed forward, ripped the rifle from the alien's hand, and snapped it in half over her knee. Tossing the two pieces to the ground, she just palmed the alien's face and sent them to join their broken toy. With that, she turned to the leader to see something that changed her demeanor entirely. The leader had aimed his rifle, but not at her. Instead, the emitter was pointed at Captain Deeg. A storm came over her face. Stop, or he dies, the leader warned. Now, now. We were playing by a certain set of rules, and I was happy to do so. You left them out of it, and I didn't kill any of you. That was fine by me. But you're about to change those rules. Her hand slowly lowered to the pistol that had remained unused at her side. And I will play by them. You'd risk his life to take mine, the bug asked. Nope. Charge time on those rifles seems to be just over a second. That plus your piss-poor reaction time, and I'm fairly certain I could get off too. Maybe three shots before you fire. That's one to disarm you, one to put you down, and one more just to be sure. The bug found only cold certainty in Penelope's eyes as he tried to discern whether she was lying or not. He struggled to keep the weapon steady. The rest of the bay was silent. You're bluffing, he said, but wilted under her intense gaze. The question isn't whether or not I'm bluffing. The real question is whether or not you're willing to bet your life on that gamble. 
I wouldn't. He felt so small under her gaze. His instincts screamed at him that this was no creature to trifle with. Those eyes burned into him, and yet he felt nothing but a freezing sensation in his gut. Don't do it. The rifle dropped to the ground with a thud. Good choice. Hey everyone, hope you loved the video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe for more awesome sci-fi content. And if you're feeling generous, check out our Ko-Fi page to support the channel. Every bit helps us bring you more stories from the stars. Thanks a bunch.